Hello and welcome to the return of the weekly gold making recap where I go through what's been happening with my characters, where I've been making gold and we have a look in general at the whole gold making scene and see where we can be making gold at the moment. Now it's been a few weeks since my last video so we're kind of getting into our groove with Shadowlands now. It's all kind of settled into a nice routine, people are unlocking all their covenant uh, storylines and progressing through the game, doing mythics and getting their gear into a nice position. The, the mythic raid Castle Nathria has all been done, so people are going through that content. I think the general impression I'm getting is most people are really enjoying Shadowlands. I can speak for myself, I'm absolutely having a blast. Yes, I'm spending a lot of my time making gold, because that's where I really enjoy working out how the systems work with all the professions and things like that. I'm slowly building my gold back up to my original investment of 1.7 million. So I'm working my way back up to that. So not huge amounts of golds by any headline standards. It's enough for me to make use of the gold in enjoying the game and doing all the things I want to do. What I'll do is I'll basically go through each of my characters and their professions, see where they're currently making gold, what my plans are for the future, and where there may be any gaps where I might need to do a little bit more work on them, and then hopefully provide some ideas for other people on their gold making journeys. So let's start with Samadan. Okay, so here we have Samadan already. We have in the mailbox, this is just from reposting on this morning. Obviously it's reset day, so a lot of enchants have been doing well. I've got various celestial guidance has been doing well. Some more Shadowlands gathering, some more celestial guidance. Not huge amounts of them. It's been really nice though, with the price of Eternal Crystals dropping and Sacred Shards, I've been able to buy them quite cheaply on the auction house. My material prices have meant that things like the Tenets of Versatility have been profitable for me as well. So I've got a bit more variety in my enchants now that are turning a good profit. All the various bags have been selling well as well. So I've got Shrouded Cloth bags here. Sold the Patent Admiral's hat, finally. <laughs> that's, a, that's been a long time selling. I'll have to go back to Booty Bay to pick that one up. And then Lightless Silk Pouch on my server has a very good price here of two, over 2,000 gold. So that is just in this afternoon's. But I'll look at the ledger and we'll have a look at how everything's doing over the, the past week so we get a comparison. So I go to the ledger and look at revenue. And then if we just look at the last seven days and Samadan and order this by items. We can have a good look at the various things that I've been selling over the past week. So it totals up 151,000 gold in sales. That's not profit, mind, that's just sales. But some things have sold very well. Um, so a few lucky sales, like this Azure Silk Cloak. Only cost me three gold to make, and I've sold it for 11,600 gold. So that's by and far a unusual sale. My more consistent sales are things like this, uh, black mage weave sets, blue lumberjack shirt, cinder cloth pants is quite a good one, 2,400 there, deep sea bags, quite a few there, and then the enchants coming through here, so agile soul walker, speed of soul, shaded hearthing, then some of the older ones like glorious stats, and we've got fort fortified avoidance, fortified leech, and then Shadowlands Gathering, not a huge profit maker that one, but I like to offer anything that is a profit, so I'll still sell that one. Enchants are quite nice in that they're quite cheap to sell anyway. Then here come a few of the tenants which I've been able to do since the price of Sacred Shards has dropped in price. So we've got a few good ones there. Celestial Guidance is really quite a good one. I've sold 12 there. Not a huge profit margin on those, about 100 gold per item, but it is a quick seller. So if you are looking for enchants, that one seems to do very well for me. One of the big profit margin ones is Sinful Revelation. That does require Eternal Crystals. My current price of Eternal Crystals is about 666. I'll have to look at what the price they are at the moment. In fact, let's look at that now, because this is pivotal to enchanting, really. Yeah, so we've got here Eternal Crystals are settling down at about 690 gold at the moment. So I was lucky to get the ones I did get at 666. So obviously people are disenchanting their gear. And so this might be the new normal for a while. So as long as I stick with this one. Sacred Shards though, very cheap here, 44 gold. My mat cost is coming here at 85 gold. So it is really more cost effective for me to buy those on the auction house at the moment with the prices I've got there. I haven't really delved into a, a good system either using jewel crafting or using the shadow lace cuffs with tailoring because the price of lightless silk is quite high. So I've not found a really good system yet of um, getting my own sacred shards 
other than currently the Shadow Lace Cuffs. I'll look into jewel crafting in the future, certainly. But Sacred Shards at that price, 44 gold is very attractive, so I'll probably end up buying a few of those at the moment. What I have been doing is trying to make sure that each of my characters, I've done this new thing where I've given all the spare gold over to my banking character, Hellfire. They don't actually do any auctions themselves, they're just storage. And then all my profession characters, I've given 100,000 gold each, and that is their float money. And then what I'm going to do in a week's time is have a look at all these figures and see how well each character has gotten on with their profession. Because that will give me a good idea as to how well that profession is doing in terms of profit and loss. So it'll be interesting to come back to this next week and see where everyone's at. Obviously, Samadan has three professions, cooking, tailoring and enchanting. Most of my other characters only have one main profession and the other profession is usually a gathering one. However, uh, Bridget has dual crafting and engineering as well, so there are a few differences there. But it'll be interesting to see how those characters are doing in terms of making their gold. As I have a few of these at a nice price here that's significantly less than what I've currently got them for, I'll help my averages now by just buying a few more of those. Always spending money. Looks like I might have failed to buy that auction. Let me try a fresh set. There's some more have come on now for even less. 40 gold. I'll take that new price, most definitely and snap those up. I'd be tempted even to take those, get 140 there for 6,000, and that will keep me in a um, fact. I'd probably even, if I was looking to flip this market, I would buy those at six and then maybe list a few of them back on at 51. That could be an option. But I won't get into full on gold making there. Once a gold maker, always a gold maker. We'll carry on looking at what we have here at the moment in terms of sales. So enchants are doing quite well. Uh, Sinful Revelation was the one I was talking about that is quite a good seller. It's got uh, 1,300, but not currently a profit for me based on my price of Sacred Shards and Eternal Crystals. So I'll have to revisit that once my Eternal Crystal price is a bit cheaper. This probably should be about, from looking at that, that's still below, even if it's 666 for my Eternal Crystal price, that's still below cost, so I might have to flip those up. But selling one for 2,200 seems quite good. Occasionally down the Enchanted, a Lithium Bar and Enchanted Lightless Silk. These markets can be quite competitive, so and they also cost quite a lot of gold to invest in in order to turn something around. There are currently profits on my server with each of these three. There's also the Callous Hide one. But it's not a market I like to invest too heavily in because the prices are still trending downwards. Maybe Lightless Silk is leveled out for a while because that seems to be settled but the callous hide is trending downwards and the alethium bar i haven't looked at lately but it all depends on how quickly you can sell it it's a very competitive market that one so i try not to invest too much if i do get some good sales then that's great then tailoring has been doing quite well bags as always netherweave bags frostweave bags deep sea bags lightless silk bags are all coming through i occasionally get some sales of the shadow lace cuffs uh, cord, foot wraps, those kind of things. These are the base 158 gear. They're not up to 168 yet. I am still working on my Venari rep. It takes me a long time to get through. I'm currently we're at 4,300 of ambivalence. The next one is cordial. So I've not got long to go yet. It's just a question of finding the time and making sure you go into the more it can be one of those things that I forget to do as part of my routines. I tend to focus on the gold making, but that will be another thing to add into my things to be able to do the item level 168 gear. The thing that has been doing well for me at the moment though, is the other end of the spectrum, the novice crafters marks. If you look at tailoring, you can't do this in TSM because we haven't got um, the option of optional reagents yet. But if you use the standard interface and you can make under tailoring, and all the shrouded cloth, pants, rope. So at the moment, these are requires level 52. The robe requires level 57. And what I've been doing is getting two or three of these and applying a novice crafter's mark to these, which will set the item level to 87 and the required level to 50. This makes them particularly attractive to a fresh level 50 character. Maybe someone's bought a boost or something like that and wants to get straight into doing some content and they need some gear just to get their item level up. Then I usually have a set of two or three of each of these. Some of them are already at 50, like the, which one is it? Like the sandals, that is already at level 50, so that one doesn't count. But all the other ones I can use and then there's the 
Also, I've got them favorited here, the cuffs. Not that one, that one. That is also level 50, so I don't use that one either. But all the other ones are fair game to downgrade them from whatever item level they are and put them with a novice crafter's mark on and downgrade it to item level 87 and required level 50. Now I've been putting a markup on these of, I started off with 500 gold, then I increased the markup as they were selling so well to 1000 gold, and they're still currently selling on my server. It's because I think you have to do these manually, so it's not part of an automated process, but it's definitely making me some extra gold. So try it out on your server. I think leather working's my best one so far. If we look over here and go back to the ledger, so if we scroll down here, uh, the, all the shrouded cloth here, you can see it's 600, 500, then I upped it to 1,000, I've sold one hair for 1,000, and then the standard stuff, the stuff that isn't downgraded, I've been selling it like almost at a loss really, once you take into listing fees into account. But by adding 500 or 1,000 gold on, I've been able to make a decent amount of profit, which has been really nice, because there's a difference there, 550 to 80 from a downgraded item, which is more expensive, to the one I'm competing with everyone else with, and I'm barely making any money. There's not been a lot of food this past week. I've not been doing so well on the food. I think the price of the, on my server, the price of the materials is too high versus the price of the food, and I think my average buys for each of them is not caught giving me a profit. I haven't looked into it too much, but it's uh, something that can also be added in here. Got a few here, iridescent apple sauce. I have been selling heavy wind wool bandages here, 13,000 here for 100, and down here wind wool bandage for 21,000. That's another lucky sale on this front. So I've had some good luck as well as some steady sellers for Samadan. So it's been doing quite well, 151,000. Now, if we look at my Alchemist Awakening, we have a lot of good stuff here that's been going through 226,000 in sales, but a lot of that will be expenses because the profit margins for alchemy is, is more down to volume more than anything else. I've got a good mix of BFA with the Silas Prog and Shadowlands potions selling, so Endless Fathoms, a good chunk of them there, and Embalmer's Oil. One that's been doing particularly well for me is the Potion of Phantom Fire. Got a few sales of those. I've upped my production on those somewhat and then we've got a spectral flask of power goes for quite a lot of money as well so that one's been doing well for me and then a steady shadow core oil has been doing well too i did try flipping this shade stone it didn't work out for me in the end i bought it for 4400 and ended up selling it for 2300 so that was a loss for me there i haven't got the reputation in order to make this myself yet that's something else to be added in this is one of the things that I'm really missing on all of my characters, actually just being able to play them, play the game, and advance them in their reputations, and advance them in their level, so that they can just finish off the few bits and pieces of recipes that they haven't got yet. So moving on to Earthen, my leather worker. Now, obviously not level 60. I've not gotten into the legendary base items at all on any of my characters. I'm thinking about doing it on Samadan, as he's currently level 60, and maybe looking at that, because I've made my first legendary myself, and got a feel for how that works. It's an interesting market. I think it would cost me a lot of gold to go there. So at the moment, I'm holding off. I'm sticking with what I'm doing, and enjoying the profits at the moment. Here you can see all the desolate leather, all this stuff that's 900, 500, 1000. This is all downgraded to item level 87 quite a few sales of these, and the scale, the male equivalent as well, quite a few sales of those, 38,000 total, so it's not as high as alchemy or enchanting or tailoring, but it does give me a nice little bit of gold because a lot of this is profit. And then I've got a few sales of the shade bound uh, gear right down at the bottom, occasionally for a good price as well, three and a half thousand on those. I think with leather working, I will really need to get up to level 60 and start investing in the legendary base item market. Now I'm probably too late to get the really high prices that people have been commanding, those that pushed right into it early on. But I have a feeling that with the legendary base market, it's something I'm gonna have to do at some point because I wouldn't be surprised if Blizzard start increasing the number of ranks. Maybe there's a rank five or a rank six, which increases the base item level. And if I haven't done the prep work to get myself a whole load of rank fours, then I think I'll really fall behind on that. So I will bite the bullet and start investing into these markets, just not yet. I'm enjoying looking at my gold go up at the moment for the first time in a while. 
and blacksmithing has had a slow amount of sales, not a huge amount. Occasionally we get um, the upgraded armor again with plus a thousand onto those. The weapons are a tough market because they're all requires level 50 and so it's a bit of a tricky one. Everyone's selling them for very close to crafting cost on those. So there's a few bits and pieces here, nothing huge. Inflatable mount shoes have been selling quite well. Those are quite good. They only cost me 419 to make. And then a couple of sharpening stones and a shadow steel waste guard there. So not a huge amount with blacksmithing, but it's at least making itself some money in the meantime. Now Bridget, my jewel crafter, engineer extraordinaire. Some real hit and misses on this one. Uh, jewel crafting has some big hits with the jeweled onyx panther there. Managed a sale of that. That's about, how much is that? About a 30,000 gold profit on that. Engineering wise, goblin glider kits are always a consistent seller if you can get that because it's obviously a competitive market as well. And then the jewel crafting side of things, a whole load of different bits and pieces that are small profits but frequent sellers, a few hundred each time. I'm up here at 194 because of these big sales. I've got another one here for engineering, the Sky Golem. I've finally got enough Yars Peculiar Energy Sources and was able to make one of those. Next time I'm going to make Pierre rather than the Sky Golem and see if I can sell one of those and add it to the list. So all in all, that's uh, pretty decent for me, uh, 194,000 sales there. And then the last character is Inscription, Stabadan. Very, very little here in terms of sales. Glyph the Spectral Raptor. Occasionally I'll manage to get a Missive sale or Time with a Still Mind. Incredibly in competitive markets on my server. That said, you know, 25,000 not to be sniffed at for the week. The main thing I really need to do on this character is learn more glyphs, learn the legion ones, just get some more depth into my profession. I very much only scratched the surface of this. I really haven't been able to sell much in the way of decks. I'm not sure those markets are really worth going into at this point. So the main thing really is missives and tomes. The problem with missives is they're too expensive to put on regular gear and sell specific items and once you add them onto a legendary base item, you don't need to reapply them if you're then going to upgrade that legendary base item. So the demand is actually quite limited, unfortunately. I was quite hopeful with these that they maybe could be used on all sorts of gear throughout, you know, the same with relics of the past. But unfortunately, because of the price it costs to make them, it's not really cost effective to make a specific set tailored for a certain set of stats and then put a reasonable markup on it. That would have been really nice to be able to focus on that and, and make some custom gear for people. But as it is, it's only really for the legendary base items at the end of the day. So overall, let's have a look at my graph. So we are here from Shadowlands to about here. So this has been my mark for a while, this 1.7 million at the start of Shadowlands, before I started investing heavily into all of the professions, doing them all at once, but not really mastering any one of them any one time did cost me a lot of gold. And only now that I've got them all maxed out, and now that I've got their professions in a more stable state, and that the expansion has settled into its routine, we've got alchemy cells, we've got enchant cells, people are upgrading their gear steadily, and there's been a nice steady rise over the Christmas period, and now we're starting to make some decent gold back up to 1.2 million. TSM is telling me here, average profit per day, 6,000. Eternal crystals selling and buying being my top items there. And the enchanted heavy, heavy callous hide. Those aren't really indicative. Looking at it from a weekly perspective gives me a much better idea as to what's selling right now. So other things to think about for the future. Well, I'm going to carry on with the consistent sellers that I've got for the moment. I'm going to make sure that I've got some of the novice crafters mark gear for each of the armor types always on the market. I think those will be good making sure that I've got a decent set of enchants. I'll have a look into the cooking as well. I need to look at the profit margins on those. Really need to work on my Venari rep. That will be the next thing for my main character, as well as going through and doing the storyline as well. I want to get the Kyrian Covenant campaign finished, which will be quite nice. Just want to see the story and see how that develops. Other characters, it would be nice to get them started leveling up, especially leather working perhaps, and jewel crafting. But I think what I'll probably need to do next is look at the legendary base items on tailoring. It's not a great one in terms of sales, I don't think. There are a few markups, maybe in some rank twos. 
I'm just going to have to test it out. I'm going to have to bite the bullet and get through that rank 1 barrier and see if there's any profits in the rank 2 beyond that. It's going to be an interesting one to learn about, but I'm not going to rush into it. Uh, at the moment, I'd really like to, before I do that, just get back up to this mark and have a little bit more capital behind me before I start investing heavily. There's always kind of like these comfortable thresholds, really. I've got uh, here, I stayed a million gold for a long time, just kind of ticking on through it. Now that I made a concerted effort to post daily and make sure that my gold has gone up. So all in all, it's been a good week. We made profit from the beginning to the end, which is always nice to see gold going up rather than going down. I'm still working on my Let's Play series. You'll have seen that video came out just recently. So we will carry on with Shadow Dan, Stabber Dan and Samadan on the NA side on Lightbringer. They'll continue their journey. So I'll aim to get a video of that out probably weekly. I'll do this video weekly and then I'll try and get another video out towards going through professions or something else like that into more detail. That's the general plan at the moment. Obviously I'm still streaming every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday evening at the moment. You can catch me 7pm GMT time and if you're interested in any of my groups and operations they're all available over on my Patreon for both the Let's Play series and all my professions here as well as I release things like screensavers and various art and things and ultimately it's a really good way for me to provide content to you and for you to be able to support me as a two-way system. So any support over there is really appreciated. So thank you all. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoy this kind of gold making summary. Hopefully it gives you a few ideas as to what you might be able to sell yourself on your server. Let me know in the comments how things are going for you and what's been your best sellers this week. Then we'll revisit this in another week's time and see how everyone's going on. I'm interested to see what everyone's gold is after this 100,000 each. Obviously Samadan has already gone under his 100,000 gold there at 93,000 so he's got some ground to make up but from looking at that mailbox that's another 14,000 I think there so if we just scoop that up now we're back into the 108,000 so it gives me a nice easy visual indicator as to how well I'm doing with that profession. I just have to make sure that each character buys and sells its own mats for those professions so that I can keep a more accurate track of the profits. The only time this won't work really is when my leather worker makes braces for Samadan to disenchant and I'll have to work out how I'm going to take note of those costs in the future. Maybe I'll get Samadan to buy all the desolate leather or something. But overall I'm having a huge amount of fun still in Shadowlands, really enjoying the expansion as it unfolds. Looking forward to whatever's going to be announced on BlizzCon Line next month. That's a little way off. Speculation is already starting as to what's going to happen with the next patch coming out. For now, at the casual pace that I'm going through the content, I've still got lots to do. So there's still fun things to do and more Torghast and uh, my Kyrian campaign, as well as exploring the dungeons and trying out some mythics perhaps once my item level gets a bit higher. Currently about 171 at the moment. So lots of really good things coming up. So I hope you enjoy this video. Until next time, happy cold making, and I'll see you very soon.